Hello everyone. I'm sorry we can't be with you in person due to circumstances I'm sure you'll understand. So we're here today really to introduce Boom Hall Trust. We believe that Boom Hall is an undiscovered jewel. We are committed to the restoration of Boom Hall to bring it back to life for our children and our children's children. We are an experienced locally based team with external expert advisors. Good governance is essential for us and so we are a registered company limited by guarantee and we are registered as a charity for tax purposes. Our trustees are me, Jim Salmon. I'm a local chartered surveyor in private practice with extensive experience in development and construction. And I've been involved with the Wall City Partnership as an active member right from the start. Well, Pauline Ross needs no introduction. In 1992, she founded the Playhouse Theatre at Artillery Street with just 300 pounds. Later, she restored the building at a cost of 4.6 million and today, the Playhouse has an audience of over 15,000 people per annum, with over 150 shows each year. Professor Alistair Rowan was Slade Professor of Fine Art at Oxford University. No one knows more about the architectural history of Northern Ireland than Professor Alistair Rowan. Not only that, but he has led the restoration of many important buildings, and in doing so, has secured a sustainable future for those buildings. The examples I can give you are Guns Green House at Eymouth Harbour in Scotland, also Newman House in St Stephen's Green in Dublin. Karen Latimer. Karen was chairman of Hearth Housing Association and Hearth were responsible for the restoration of the stable buildings at Zion Mills. Karen is a trustee of the Architectural Heritage Fund and a member of the Ulster Architectural Heritage Society. She is a member of the Irish Landmark Trust and the Historic Buildings Council of Northern Ireland. And she's been involved in the restoration of many historic buildings. In addition, she's been an international judge for building design competitions in Europe, Australia and in China. She is a powerful advocate for Boom Hall. Jim Foster will be known to many of you. He is a retired chartered town planner and of course, he, he was director of development at the London Derry Development Office. He is a very wise guide for Boom Hall Trust. Dr James Simpson has been a member of the Royal Commission on Historic Buildings and Monuments in Scotland and of the Edinburgh World Heritage Trust. As a partner in the renowned architectural firm of Simpson and Brown, he has led the restoration of many buildings of national historic interest. Among his many publications are the care and conservation of ancient monuments and historic buildings in Scotland. And also, he wrote the British Standard on Conservation. James believes that Boom Hall is eminently restorable. Well, Des Reid is a local chartered accountant in private practice in the city, a former board member of Clan Mill Housing Association. Primrose Wilson. Primrose is currently president of the Ulster Architectural Heritage Society. She was chairman of the Historic Buildings Council for Northern Ireland and she initiated the European Heritage Open Days in Northern Ireland as well. In 2006, she became founder and chairman of the Follies Trust and the Follies Trust has been responsible for the restoration of many small buildings throughout Ireland. She is passionate about the apprenticeships and traditional building skills and would love the opportunity to show that at Boom Hall. Marie Donaghy is an architect with a passion for ancient buildings. She has worked on many well-known buildings, including the Bank of Ireland building in College Green in Dublin. And she was involved in the restoration of our own, the Guildhall. And last but not least, the man without whom we would not all be here today. And that is, of course, Bart O'Donnell, a well-known local barrister and historian. Bart was responsible for saving Boom Hall from destruction in 1987 and in 1997 and then at his own expense he had the windows blocked up the doors blocked up and the structure strengthened the restoration of the boom hall estate will be the realization of a lifetime's ambition for bart and now i'll hand you over to bart who will talk about why boom hall should be restored something amazing happened here in boom hall 330 years ago, something that affected the entire course of Western history and is relevant even today. I'm standing beside King James as well, where King James came to look 
at the boom that was built across the river by the French engineers. And what happened when that boom was broken was suddenly the history of Britain was changed. Because no longer, once Derry was held, could James join his Irish army up with his Scottish army and march upon William in London. That plan was over. And what that meant is from that point forward, the Bill of Rights in the British Constitution became something that would last until this day. All across the New World, everybody copied the Bill of Rights. And what did that mean? People in power needed to get permission from that point forward. So Parliament was sovereign. The King could not have a standing army without the permission of Parliament. The King could not tax without the permission of Parliament. This place also has a significance because during the famine, the house was sold by the Alexanders in order to raise money to help people who were starving to go to America to start new lives, to build new houses for them and to build a hospital for the sick down in Caledon. So this is a very significant place with connections to North America, to South Africa, to India, to all over the world. And we intend to renew those connections and to put the city on the map internationally uh, for the relevance that it has to the history of peoples all over the world. Environmentally, Boom Hall is a very special place. It's beside the Bay Road Nature Reserve and we would advocate that the reserve is extended into Boom Hall and that this land is managed as a nature reserve. The Woodland Trust has designated this as an area of ancient woodland. Over 25% of the veteran trees in the city are in this place. There are some very special trees that are over 400 years old here. And because this site has been untouched for so long and has remained in a pristine state, you have six species of the seven species that are of bat that exist in Northern Ireland are on this site. This is a very rare thing. These are protected species. And the reason they're here is because this site has been undisturbed. And we intend to keep it that way, not just for the bats, but for the otters, for the red squirrels, and for the many other creatures and plants and species that have been able to survive on this site because it has been run in a very environmentally friendly way for such a long time. The UK National Ecosystem Assessment for Northern Ireland has identified urban spread and the change of land from rural to urban as one of the biggest threats to biodiversity. And that's why it's extremely important that we keep this piece of green land in an urban setting free so that it can develop and preserve the biodiversity that is already here. The approach of Boom Hall Trust is progressive conservation, keeping the best of what we have. It's not redevelopment of a site that has got an awful lot of richness in it that could be destroyed by that redevelopment. We're talking about conserving what is good here and keeping it as best we can. To appreciate just how important a piece of architecture Boom Hall is, you just need to take a look at the map of Northern Ireland and see where the heritage properties are, the National Trust and the Landmark Trust properties. And you can draw a line from Coleraine through the Sperrins and down to Oma. And there are virtually no heritage properties open to the public. Not only is it significant from that respect and rare in that respect, but we know from our investigations that the house now appears to have been designed by an architect called Robert Taylor, who was one of the most important architects in Britain during the end of the 18th century. What's significant about Boom Hall is that this appears to be the only house that can be attributed to him in Ireland. He was significant because he was the man who designed the Lord Mayor of London's coach and also was responsible for designing the Bank of England. Boom Hall is one of the purest examples of neoclassical architecture which has been unsullied by future alterations. And for that reason we believe Boom Hall is an extremely unique and rare piece of architecture and we commend the Council for its recent call to have the house listed. And now I'd like to tell you about Boom Hall Trust's offer. Our offer is sustainable, realistic and collaborative. First, we offer to restore Boom Hall, and that means the house, the stables, the wall garden and the parklands. Secondly, public ownership. Boom Hall Estate will remain in public ownership and will be used for the benefit and enjoyment of local communities now and in the future. The council will not lose control of Boom Hall. 
Thirdly, the scheme will be funded and phased so that the restoration is carried out in a way that doesn't overburden the council with capital expenditure or debt. Fourthly, not-for-profit. Boom Hall will be run on a not-for-profit basis and any profits will be reinvested directly back in to Boom Hall. There will be no franchise-related entrance fees. Fifthly, sustainability. Our offer is realistic and sustainable economically, socially and environmentally. And last but not least, it's partnership. Boom Hall Trust will work in genuine partnership with the Council and with local communities. We offer our knowledge, our expertise and our partnerships at no cost. There will be full transparency in all our dealings. And now I'd like to hand you over to Pauline Ross who will explain how Boom Hall can answer the many needs of our community. We will develop an integrated education and learning programme for all. We will create for the North West the gift of the biggest hands-on outdoor classroom, all 30 acres. A learning by doing, by having fun with all our programmes that will be devised and developed in partnership with our health and educational experts. A sanctuary for healing and wellness, peace building and an open air art studio for everyone and only 10 minutes away from the historic wall city. A recent Queen's University study concluded that 75% of children spent less time outdoors than prison inmates. And the World Health Organization claimed that there is currently a global epidemic of childhood inactivity. After decades of decay, it is still standing. Prime for restoration to play its part in all our futures, for the health and well-being of our people and our communities. 18th century poet Alexander Pope in a poem writes, In all, let nature never be forgot. Sir Ken Robinson, friend of our city and sadly recently departed, said that children and young people need both physical activity and creative activity. In Northern Ireland, there is an epidemic of emotional trauma. It feels like everyone is hurting, with many communities and individuals trapped in their thoughts and emotions. The suicide rate in our young is heartbreaking. Our children and young people deserve better, deserve a brighter future than the darkness that we as adults live through. Working at grassroots, we will develop a local, national and international programme in arts and peace building. Within the shared space of Boom Hall, we can face our past and former enemies to imagine new futures together, built on peace and prosperity. The Boom Hall Estate has the capacity to be a unique, safe, shared community space where nature, art, heritage, economic growth, social transformation can grow organically and be nurtured into a world-class project where social cohesion and sustainability can bloom and prosper. The Boom Hall story is laced with international historical connections and we will use these to inform our vision and our projects. Currently, we are developing our business plan and this will confirm uses, funding and partnerships and we will share this information as it becomes available. So in conclusion, Boom Hall is to be restored and it will remain in public ownership. Boom Hall Trust offers exceptional expertise and knowledge in the area of sustainable regeneration. Boom Hall itself lends itself to multiple uses and benefits with potential positive impacts across a whole range of beneficiaries. Our business case is founded on community need and is linked to the council community plan. Seed funding has already been secured from leading conservation and social welfare funders. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity to bring Boom Hall back to life for future generations.